first of all, it's a transformation from a non-Jewish identity to a Jewish one. It's also the shift from the personal, Sarai, meaning my princess, to the universal, Sarah, meaning the princess or even princess of multitudes. It's also a change from a name being meaningful to me personally, to the individual, to turning it outwards, to inspiring others. Sarah began as an individual, but she became the matriarch for an entire people, a model and a symbol for all of us to live up to. She was strong-willed. She had faith in God and in her husband, and along with Abraham, she demonstrated a model of hospitality and generosity. In Pirkei Avot, the Ethics of the Fathers, chapter 4, verse 17, we learn the following teaching. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Shlosha Chetarim Hem, Keter Torah, Vecheter Kehuna, Vecheter Malchut, Vecheter Shem Tov, Ole Al Gabe Hem. Rabbi Shimon says, There are three crowns the crown of Torah, the crown of the priesthood, and the crown of kingship. And the crown of a good name is superior to them all. I believe that one's name, especially a good name, serves as a bridge between life and death. By having created a good name for herself, Sarah lives on, even after her physical death. So what does this all mean? As Rabbi Nevins taught us in homiletics class, our sermons should include an asma, a so what. What does this mean for us today? Now, I chose to quote from the books of Jeremiah and Daniel, both because they had fascinating relationships to their names and to their self-perceptions, but also because those are my names. My Hebrew name is Yirmiyahu Daniel. And like my two namesakes, or my name givers, I see a connection between my own name and my identity. When I was a child, I didn't care for the name Yirmiyahu. People tried to tell me that it was a fine name, but I didn't want to listen to them. As I got older, I began to like it a little better, and eventually I embraced it. But then, when I lived in Israel two years ago, people told me that it was antiquated, it was old-fashioned. First I didn't want it, and then they wouldn't let me have it. <laughs> Yirmiyahu is a name that I had to grow into, just as I think the title Rabbi is something that I have had to grow into. As I stand here, crossing over one of the last hurdles before ordination, I realize that it has taken me all 28 year of the years that I've been alive to get ready to take on this new name. Bound up with the term rabbi are countless connections to Jewish traditions, to how I am viewed today, and to the expectations that people will have of me in the future. Now think of your own name. To what extent does it reflect the person that perhaps your parents aspired for you to be, or the person that you've become, or the person that you want people to remember after you're gone. <clears throat> Our names can inspire us to stay on track, to keep asking whether, you were, whether we are living up to our greatest potential. What is your mission in life? Do you embrace it? Do you fight it? Ask yourself, what does this name say about who I am. Like the prophets, people trust what they say, what you say if they respect you, if they know what you stand for. Now these questions, they're not easy. Not for me, and I don't believe for anyone. But as I prepare to become a rabbi, to cross that daunting threshold, I cannot help but consider what this title, this new addition to my name and to my identity will mean. I want to conclude with one last thought, articulated by the Israeli poet Zelda much better than I ever could. Lechol ish yeshem shenatan lo Elohim venatnu lo aviv veimo. Lechol ish yeshem shenatnu lo komato veofen chiyucho venatan lo haarim. Lechol ish yeshem shenatnu lo haarim venatnu lo kitelav. Lechol ish yeshem shenatnu lo hamazalot venatnu lo shchenav. לכל איש יש שם שנתנו לו חטאיו ונתנה לו כמיהתו. לכל איש יש שם שנתנו לו שונאיו ונתנה לו אהבתו. לכל איש יש שם שנתנו לו חגיו ונתנה לו מלאכתו. לכל איש יש שם שנתנו לו תקופות השנה ונתן לו עיוורנו. לכל איש יש שם שנתן לו הים ונתן לו מותו. 
Each of us has a name given by God and given by our parents. Each of us has a name given by our stature and our smile and given by what we wear. Each of us has a name given by the mountains and given by our walls. Each of us has a name given by the stars and given by our neighbors. Each of us has a name given by our sins and given by our longing. Each of us has a name given by our enemies and given by our love. Each of us has a name given by our celebrations and given by our work. Each of us has a name given by the seasons and given by our blindness. Each of us has a name given by the sea and given by our death. We have many names and titles in this life, some that we assign ourselves, but most are assigned by other people around us. We do, however, have the power to influence how we are perceived, and my blessing for all of us is that we achieve good names so that our legacies will live on, just like Chaye Sarah, the eternal life of Sarah. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Evans uh, will be giving you the change. You're Miyahu Daniel. <laughs> How wonderful it is to learn Torah from you this morning. We welcome Rebecca, your mother and uncle, Rebecca's parents and brother, and your entire family and friends who gathered here uh, to learn Torah from you and to Shep Nahas of this wonderful moment uh, of, uh, of celebration, of learning your Torah. You know, you, you taught us so much about embracing our own names and our own heritage and also our own mission in life. Uh, in the book of uh, Yirmiyahu, towards the beginning, right after the part that you quoted from us, God says to Yirmiyahu, don't be afraid because I'm with you. I'll protect you on your journey. And then he says this very beautiful thing. It says that God touched my mouth, reached out his hand and touched my mouth, and it says, Behold, I have placed my words in your mouth. And uh, as you go forward from rabbinical school, you go forward not empty-handed, but you go with God's words in your mouth. You've shown that to us today, how beautifully those words are within your mouth, how they guide you and give you identity and give you purpose and mission. And I think that this is going to be the great uh, segula, the great protection that you've got as you go forward. And that second name of yours, uh, Daniel, I'm partial to as well. And uh, don't forget, Daniel is called Isha Kamudot, uh, the man of delights. And there's a, there's a lot of uh, Kamudot by you. You've got a, a grace to you. You've got a joy. And I think that when you go out into the world um, as the rabbi, when you accept that title in just a few months, you're going to go with God's word, but also you're going to go with that open, that special uh, neshama that you have. And you're going to bring that into the world. And with your Torah and with your love, you're going to be truly as Evan Hashem, a servant of God. So I hope that you accept that and continue to grow into that role in the years ahead. May you be blessed with good health, long life, and much hatzlacha uh, on your journey. Shikha. Wow. Wow.